Swift data allows us to make models that reference each other. For example, to say there's a class object that has an array of students inside it, or an employee object that refers to a manager object. These are called relationships, and they come in all sorts of forms. Now, Swift data does a good job of managing these relationships automatically, as long as you tell it exactly what you want, although there is some room for improvement. First, we have our current Swift data code here for a user, with a name, a city, and a join date here. Now we can extend this thing to say that every user can have an array of jobs assigned to them, tasks they've got to complete soon as part of their work. To do that, we're gonna make a new job model. It could be in this file here or a separate file, it doesn't really matter. I'll make it a separate file here. I'll press Command N and call this thing a Swift file with job.swift as its name. And inside here, we're gonna add a Swift data import here. And then say there's a model class called job, and a name string, and a priority int, and an owner, which is an optional user. Then an initializer for that. Now notice how I've made this owner property here refer directly to the user model. I've told so directly these two models are linked together somehow. And now we're gonna adjust our user class over here to say it has a jobs array inside it. So we'll say var jobs is an empty job array. So jobs have owners and users have an array of jobs, okay? This relationship goes both ways, which is usually a good idea. It makes the data easier to work with. Now, this array will start working immediately. Swift Edit will automatically load all the jobs for a user when they're first requested. And so if they're never actually used, if you only use a name, city, and join date, for example, it never loads the jobs. It saves all that work. Even better, the next time our application launches, Swift Data will automatically add a jobs property to all the existing users. So I can just press Command R now on the code, which didn't even have jobs before, and it'll all load correctly. All are now an empty jobs array attached to them. This is called a migration. When we add or delete properties in our models as they evolve over time to change the way they work, and it'll actually evolve the model behind the scenes as well. It, it upgrades the database for us. And so Swift will actually do a simple migration like this by hand. You can just say, okay, you've now got empty jobs array, done, okay? But as you progress further with Swift data, you'll realize you can actually make custom migrations to handle more complicated movements. Now, as a tip for you, uh, when we made our original app struct over here, we said make me a model container for user.self, which means Swift data knows how to work with users. We don't need to add job.self to that. And you can do, you can say do both, have this user and job if you want to. But we don't need to because Swift data can see, aha, user is linked to job. It relies on job, it must make job at the same time. So that one line makes user and job automatically. Even better, you haven't got to change the query at all. Our current query, oops, there's the, in our, our user's view here, sorry. This one works normal. It just immediately just works to read all the jobs out straight away as needed. For example, we could say, uh, let's show all our users and then do a little stack here of the user's name. And then I'll place a spacer. And then I'll say we have uh, the text of the string of our user.jobs.count. How many jobs do have attached to them right now? We could say, you know, that's a font weight of bold or black, even like really strong weight. Then we'll do some padding horizontally of 10 points and some more padding vertically of five points. Give it a background color, give it a foreground style. Oops, foreground style of white and a clip shape of capsule. It works just like any other part of our data. Boom, those are zero values right now. If you wanna actually see it work some data, you can either make a new Swift UI view to actually manipulate uh, job instances if you want to, it's fine. But for testing purposes, you can get a little shortcut and just add some sample data. Uh, so we could say, for example, uh, I want to uh, handle uh, model context here. Let's say at environment, uh, model context, var model context. 
and then I'll make a method down here called add sample. And this thing is going to uh, do a new user, user with the name of, uh, let's do Piper Chapman, city is New York, capital N, join date of now, and then make some jobs. So I'll just say, let job one be a job named uh, organize sock draw with priority of three. And then job two can be a new job with a name of make plans with Alex, priority four. Now, if we say model context insert that user, then Piper Chapman's now being stored by Swift Data. These jobs are not, they're not linked right now. But now Piper is in the database, which is great. If I then later say, well, actually, now I've added Piper, I'm going to write uh, user1.jobs.append, job1, and then user1.jobs.append, job2. I'm adding those things to her array. That's it. They'll now insert job1 and job2 into Swift Data and link them together. And the jobs owner will link back to Piper, and the array of Piper's jobs will point to these two jobs automatically it's just it does so much work for you and of those five lines of code or six lines of code only that one relates to swift data this is just regular swift code this is just regular swift code nothing here is different at all we'd have to insert one of the things like the piper chapman for example into our data store so i really encourage you try noodling around have a go with this see what you can get to just try things out see how it works for you, get an idea of how it fits together. Um, well, there's more of this in the future. You'll do obviously much more of Swift to learn in the future, that's fine. But just try things out on your own, break it, fix it again, noodle around um, and see what you think. So for example, I might say uh, when this list is shown uh, on a peer, uh, perform, uh, don't do that to be Xcode, perform uh, add sample. So just make her straight away when it's loaded like this. And I'll press Command R and we'll see, boom, there's Piper Chat with two automatically in there. It just works. Like I said, um, it it knows that her information owns a job and the jobs refer back to her again. So after you've added the jobs to the array, you'll find those jobs point back to Piper Chapman automatically. It's a two-way relationship. Anyway. Again, experiment, try things out. Just try some of your own code and see what you think and really explore it here. It does matter. Your starting point in everything here should be to assume that working with data like this is just like working with a regular observable class, okay? Just let Swift data do its thing unless you've got a reason to do otherwise. There is one small catch though, okay? And it's worth covering before we move on because it's quite important. We have linked users and jobs together. So that one user can have many jobs to do as part of their daily tasks. But what happens if we delete a user? We delete Piper Chapman or Rosa Diaz, whatever. What happens to their jobs? And the answer is that all their jobs remain intact. They don't get deleted. This is a smart move from Swift Data because there's no surprise data loss, okay? If you specifically want all a user's job objects to be deleted, at the same time, we've got to add that extra information. We'll tell Swift data what, exactly what to do here. This is done with another macro, naturally, uh, called relationship. And we provide this thing with a delete rule, what to do uh, with our work objects when it's owning user is deleted. The default rule is called nullify. And that means is the owner property of each work class is set to nil. There's now no owner for this anymore, okay? We're going to change that to be a delete rule called cascade, which means deleting a user should automatically delete all the work objects. And it's called a cascade because it can go as far as you like. If work objects had a location relationship, for example, that had further relationships, it'd be delete, 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 all the way down the line for everything attached to its thing, which is why it's cascades down the Swift data hierarchy. And so back in our user class here, our jobs array. We're going to modify this to say there's a relationship with a delete rule of dot cascade. So when you delete the user, delete all their jobs too. And now being explicit, there's no more hidden job objects floating around. 
when deleting a user, which is much better.